Hello, Mark Curry here. There are lots of words that I could use to describe our current health situation or our health crisis. Uh, weird, surreal, strange, unbelievable. But as far as our industry is concerned, the business that we call show business, the word is uncertain. None of us, performers, people who are working in the theatre backstage, front of house, people who are working in television, technicians, none of us know when we will be working again. And those of us who don't know when we're working again, but who are lucky enough to have some financial security, can get through this period. But there are lots of people who are not quite so fortunate, and right now is a very difficult time for them. So I wanted to do my bit, and I'm putting together a series of conversations called Conversations with Mark Curry, with some famous faces, some of them mates, some people that you'll know, I'm sure, just chatting to them about their lives, their careers, what they're doing now, their plans on hold because of this situation. And it would be great if you could enjoy those interviews and those conversations, but what would be really wonderful would be if at the end of watching those conversations, you could hit the donate button and just give whatever you can, which would really help performers, workers in theatre and television who are going through this very, very difficult time. So it's really easy. Sit back, enjoy it. And then when you finish watching, just go to the Acting for Others website, hit the donate button, and you'll be taken immediately to the Just Giving page. It's really simple. Just give as little or as much as you can. Thanks so much for watching. Based on the 1995 novel, The Life and Times of the Wicked Witch of the West by Gregory Maguire, the musical Wicked has become a phenomenon. It opened on Broadway in 2003 and it's still going strong. And it opened at the Apollo Theatre Victoria in London in 2006 and is still playing to a packed out audience. It's lavish, it's spectacular, it's award winning. And who better to take us behind the scenes than the UK Associate Director, Petra Siniavsky. Hello. Hello, Mark. Lovely to meet you again. How are you? I've got the oh. cup. Oh, I've brilliant. <laughs> Just happened to find it at the back of the cupboard, you know. <laughs> brilliant. Incredible. Yeah. For those people who, who haven't seen it, no pressure here. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just tell us the story of Wicked. I think the bottom line of the story is um, it's about a friendship between two girls and that bond of a friendship. Come what may, whatever life throws at you, if that friendship is true and that bond is strong, it will survive anything. It's also about um, being recognised that who you are inside of you um you know the green girl you know to look at she's a freak freak of nature but she has a heart that is willing to be open to things she's um she's good but unfortunately she, um other people are using her willingness to do good to twist it so it becomes an evil act. And um, it just shows how people can be misunderstood, misinterpreted. And uh, it's like, you know, that saying, don't judge a book by its cover. It's um, th that people have depth to them. They have a soul, they have beauty within them. They might not be beautiful this way, but it doesn't mean to say they're not beautiful. And yeah. that when the right person comes along, they will recognize that inner beauty in you and love you for that. Yeah. And that love will be something really special and eternal. That's a really good description of the show, I think. And, and, and I, I also think that some of the other characters it's about ulterior motives, quite oh, yes. a few of the characters. Well, it's about it's their ambitions. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think it resonates so much with everybody when they see it? Um, I think um, what always, I think, surprises an audience is that there's so much depth to it. Um, I remember taking my goddaughter to see it, and she was eight. And um, she had to have two costume changes. 
<laughs> from act one, she had to, you know, her mum had to take her to the ladies' loo and change her costume so that she could come and see act two. Um, but at the end of it, she said to me, I said, how did you enjoy it? And she said, she said, goodness, she said, Elphaba has such a hard decision to make, doesn't she? Does she let Glinda know that she's alive or go off with Fiero? And I thought, oh my goodness, wow. the story is resonating. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that's what it is. I think people are surprised, you know, because let's face it, you know, it looks to the English eye like a grand spectacular panto you, yes. know, you know what I mean I mean you know the first entrance she's in a bubble with this beautiful dress and a wand and a, a tiara and everything and everybody in this country will recognize that as a as a fairy entrance you know in the panto but they very quickly realize there's more going on and it gets more and more complex and deeper and to, to the end that, you know, I remember sitting in the audience, especially when we were on the tour, um, saying, oh, I never knew it was going to be like this. I never knew it, the story was so strong. Oh, and but best of all, they said, oh, this was spectacular. We must book for another show immediately. You know, and, and that's the beauty of it. it it's, it's, although it's a bittersweet ending, but it's a very strong uplifting ending as well yeah yeah i also think that um maybe not so much now because it's been running so long but certainly when it first came into town i haven't seen it on broadway and when it first came into town i was slightly um hesitant about seeing it because i thought oh it's just a continuation of the wizard of oz which was never yeah. really my favorite story or, or favorite film ever Mm -hmm. So I kind of hesitated. And then when I went to see it, of course, it is a little bit about The Wizard of Oz. But it's not. It's so much more. And I remember just being absolutely gobsmacked by it. I just didn't know that it had the depth and it was about acceptance and, you know, what is good. It challenges what really is good. Yes. What what, is evil, you know, what, yeah. All those different themes going on. And of course, as you said, it just looks absolutely fantastic. Close up, the costumes are. Oh, terrific. phenomenal. Well, well, they're genius, actually. Yeah. I, I, you know, I always used to say, I, I want to sneak in one night at midnight and try them all off. <laughs> <laughs> they are so wonderful, so wonderful. But I think the storyline um, is, because um, the director, Germantello, he always sort of says, unfortunately, the scenes are very economic. Um, and he says, so, you know, as when I was directing you, um, as the wizard, when you played the wizard, and he was a very good wizard too, spectacular in fact. Um, Here's to that. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, that um, he, there's a lot of subtext to the mm. characters, mm. and it's, you know, my job to pass on all that information, and there's a lot of information. So that when you just say a simple sentence like, oh, let's just say yes, there's a, the subtext of you replying that way is loaded. Yeah. And then the way you say it represents all that subtext. And I think it's the subtext that makes the whole thing alive for the actors and meaty for the actors. Um, I also think the lyrics are very, very important um, because when I was first learning the show, um, I suddenly realized that I had to analyze the songs because they are dialogue. Yeah. You know, they, they move the story and the character's journey within that story continuously. You know, it never stops. There's no um, surplus. No. la di -dars or anything, you know what I mean? It, it is, it's no extra padding. It's all pure storytelling. Oh, I and mean, it's genius lyrics by Stephen Schwartz. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Mm. Let's, let's get into now the, the audition process, what, what yes. you look for, because generally every year 
there's a majority cast change. I know some yes. people stay on if you invite them to stay on or they want to stay on, but generally you look to freshen up the show and get new people. So let's take the ensemble first because they really are, I think you'd agree, the glue of the show. They are. Oh, absolutely. Are well, 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 we call them the tapestry of the show. You know what right. I mean? They are the backbone to the show. And they are our mood setters. They let the audience know where we are in the story. And not only that, but what the temperature is at that particular time. Is it joyful? Is it angry? You know what I mean? It, 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 it's, they are there to support the principles, but they are the backbone of the story. Absolutely, absolutely. And they have to play so many different characters, anything from Shiz, which is the university, you know, being young students. I mean, the show actually opens with the mob, we call the mob, you yeah. know, she's dead, you know, the, the anger and the rejoicing of, of the wicked witch being dead. And, um, and then the next thing, the young people being in Shiz. And then they go to the Ozdust ballroom and their other characters are quite sensual and sexy. Um, you know, and then um, in the um, uh, Emerald City, there are these extravagant characters, each with their own story. And because, you know, the costumes represent their story. Um, no, it's very, very demanding and they oh. never stop. You know, um, there's a whole other show going off in the wings you know, with all the quick, quick changes and everything. I mean, there's another, there's another show there. <laughs> I've never been told to get out of the way. I've never been told to get out of the way so much as on my first night because I wanted to, obviously I was really petrified and I wanted, always like to get down there a little bit earlier and just, yeah. and just get the atmosphere yeah. because the wizard doesn't come on for about an hour and a half, and which is yeah. really difficult. And you're hearing it go and you're feeling it. And I wanted to get down there. And I was constantly being told to get up the way and stand over there. You can't sit there because there's a quick change. And you can't look. It was an absolute nightmare. It was only sort of as I got into it after you yeah. know, two or three weeks that I could, I knew that I could I have to go down the ledge. It was really funny. Um, with the ensemble, you must get so many uh, applications from. Well, um, from this year, um, now some of these are actors as well and singers but we had over 4,000 applicants you know, and, and our casting director Jim Arnold um, has to sift through all those and um, because again um, we have certain things we have some leeway and um, I mean we have a lot of leeway with the principles but ensemble wise there is a look to the ensemble you know, we need to have um, a rather short girl, um, who we call the pineapple girl. She's the one with the wears the hair up here. Yeah. Um, you know, she has to be small because she's in the front a lot. And, um, you know, and then we have to have somebody tall because the way his costume is being designed. You know, it's, so we have certain things that we need to look for. Um, you know, um, like um, Marlena, the mother, has to be quite earthy and sensual, you know, so, you know, you know, so when we're in those auditions, we're already looking and thinking, oh, there's a potential Marlena, there's, um, you know, a pineapple girl, there's, you know what I mean, so we, we immediately already starting to tip people and take note of um, where they could fit into the show. But um, for the ensemble, you know, they all have to sing. You know, even as a dancer, you have to sing because really the show is a vocal singing show. Yeah. You know, the core of it is those vocals. And um, we're allowed to have what we call one off mic. Um, and that is usually um, the chistery because he has to do a lot of tumbling so we need yeah. to, somebody that can tumble, can um, swing from great heights. You know, he has to, he makes the first entrance, you know, down the rope and yeah. that. So we need somebody, I mean, we do train them up during the rehearsals, but there's a certain physical look to those people that we need to have. And to have somebody to tumble and to be able to sing and do all that is quite difficult to find. Um, so that's where we're allowed just, what we call a mic off. 
that so everybody Patrick, else how many, the how many stages of auditions would the chosen ensemble actually have gone through to get Well, um, if we talk the dancers, we, we have basically six sets of, um, um, just trying to think, um, because we have, you know, the boys by themselves and the girls by themselves, and we have um, 50 a go. So in, in, so in the mornings we have maybe two, we have 50 girls and then 50 boys. Then in the afternoon we'll have 50 girls and 50 boys. So that's 200 a day. And we'll probably do that for about four days. And then do you do tell them on, on the actual day, do you say? Oh, oh they're recalled, they're recalled. Yeah, um, you know, because even during the audition process, we're already, you know, marking them down. Have they got the style? Um, you know, do they look our kind of dancer? And, um, and then at the end of, the, um, of their particular call, um, Jim Arnold says, right, um, this is who we are going to recall and he makes out just there and then because it would take too long to write to agents and all that kind of thing with that, that you know yeah. many many people um, and then you know obviously we have to find out because dancers um, you know they are uh, how can I say audition wise there's more jobs for them to apply to so we have to yes. make sure that you know we can see them when they're available and all those good things so um it's a bit of a logistic nightmare to be honest so do you, uh, get, but, um, do you get some people bursting into tears in the room when jim or yourself has to say blah, 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 about you can stay everybody else no, we usually get them bursting into tears that they've been recalled <laughs> okay <laughs> because um, which is so lovely and no. it really touches your heart is for a lot of dancers this is their dream job because there are very few dance shows apart from like Cats, um, you know, that are dance shows, you know, and also at our auditions, um, it's very exciting because they not only have a pianist, but they also have a, um, a drummer, a full percussion set. Correct. So, you know what I mean? It, it sort of makes the material really live and um, be very exciting to do. Um, so once they've got through that, they get a recall. Then once they've get, got through that, the next stage, they then are asked to sing so that we know what, you know, that and um, what's going on there vocally. And then um, we have the finals, which we have on stage. And of course, again, that's another heightened excitement because they're actually on the set. Yeah. Um, and, um, but why we do that is because there's something, and you can't describe it, it's something magical happens when somebody walks on a stage, meaning they either come alive or they disappear. Yeah. And that you, 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 you know what I'm talking about, you know, yeah. but, but you can't describe it. No. It's it just something, it's magical. It, it's, they either stand out or disappear. And, um, and it's very interesting, sometimes the most beautiful dancer in a studio, you suddenly find, oh, I haven't, well, 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 where's she gone? I haven't noticed her, yes. you know, or him. Um, and, and, and that's one of those strange things you, you, you can't fathom out. And that's why we have them on stage. I'm just imagining when you finally tell that, is it 25 of them? 25, 27 of them? Yeah, something like that, yeah. And, and because well, we always have to have people that will cover, you know what I mean? We'll have first choice, second choice, and third choice. Yeah. So that, you know, because sometimes people, sometimes a bit naughty, and, um, you know, they'll say, oh, no, I'm not interested in doing the job. You know, they've come to the final, you know, we have had it, um, you know, but, um, or, or for whatever reason, you know, the, 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 suddenly the dates will clash because they've got a tour going on or, you know, who knows? And the agent hasn't told us, which isn't great. Um, so there's always something, 
in the mix there that can upset our choices. So sometimes we don't actually end up with our first choice because of whatever, you know, um, for whatever reason. But we so we always need that. We could go through all the parts, but we haven't really got time for that. But obviously, we've got to talk about the casting of Elphaba and Glinda, two of the most challenging, wonderful, yeah. dramatic, emotional roles. And these two girls are absolutely the stars of the show. They're, they're never off stage. They're either on together or one of them's taking the story. All the quick changes, yeah. they've got to dance, they've got to sing, they've got to act. Where do you start casting those girls? Um, first of all, it's locally. They have to be a, there's no cheating those notes. Um, so vocally, we have to make sure that they are strong and able, especially um, defying gravity. What we call is at the very end is the war cry, that they can yeah. really hit that and, um, and sustain it. Um, we have to be secure in their technique that they can do this eight shows a week. There are no alternate standbys, um, meaning that you know they don't do six shows and then the standby does, or the alternate does two of the shows. We don't have, we're not allowed that. We don't have that. They have to be able to do eight shows. Yes, they do have a standby, who is, um, you know, she's in the theatre all the time, um, ready to go on at any particular moment, should our Elphaba or our Glinda suddenly take ill during the show for whatever reason. Um, but no, we have to, and you know, we make inquiries often, you know, about how um, good they are maintaining themselves and being able to do a show. So it's quite a thorough, um, search that we do. Um, but then Petra, what if it's somebody brand new and they come into that first audition and then you knock our socks off? Yeah, the songs are great, they, they look great. How do you know with somebody like, even if they get through the auditions and they're good, how yeah. do you know that they'll be able to have the staying power for that show? Well, it is to do with technique, you know, um, and James Gracie, our musical supervisor, is very good about. Um, knowing about technique and the sustainability of a vocal, um, their vocal range. Um, he will also speak to their singing teacher, maybe, you know, anything like that. You know, we'll make some inquiries. Um, unfortunately, sometimes um, the enormity of the role for somebody who is, shall we say, inexperienced, um, gets to them and um and they suddenly feel under the pressure of having to live up to the status of the people that have been there before yeah so they feel that pressure and often they bring it upon themselves you know because we never want anybody to feel uncomfortable um that they can't do it and you know, that they're not being supported. Of course we support them. You know, we will do everything for them. We have a special um, vocal coach come in to guide them as well. Um, but um, that's the difficulty is knowing whether they have the mental capacity to cope with being a leading lady, because it's not just being the green girl and flying up, you know, on the levitator. Um, it's also all the other stuff that you have to do, the interviews, the promotion of the show. There's a lot going on, you know, during the day. They have to do a lot of publicity and responsibility. And they also have the responsibility of heading that company, yeah. setting a good example for that company. Yeah. Because everybody will look up to them. So of there's course. a lot of pressure on them, not only on stage, but also off stage. Massive yeah. pressure. How many auditions do those two girls have to go through before they get it? I would say on average, we, we, when we first start off, we just have them come in and sing their own song. What makes them feel comfortable. I mean, within, you know, whenever I take um, 
do an audition lecture or anything like that. Within eight bars, we know whether you have the right timbre, a voice that we're looking for. Um, then um, we give them the material, but a sort of shortened version of the material. So she'll uh, have to sing The Wizard and I and Defying Gravity, because they're the two ones that have the, what we call the money notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, then after that, um, we give them the material. We also give them um, the sides to the part, you know, some of the script to learn, to see, because also they have the responsibility, they have to be good actors too. You know, they, they have, because they have, regardless of having the best voice in the world, they've still got to be able to convey Elphaba and her journey in the storytelling. Yes. So then um, after that, we um, have them back to see how they're dealing with the material. And then um, we, if we feel that there's promise here or potential, um, we will do a workshop with them. And, but it's a one-to-one. -one. So she'll, um, the musical and, um, supervisor, James Dracy, will go through all the material meticulously with them and then I will go through the scenes, conveying the character and everything like that. And then we have the finals. And they will probably have two sessions of workshops with us. Um, and then they have the finals and they have to be videoed. And they also, bless them, um, suddenly you've got your um, panel, usually about 10 people, because <laughs> you know, everything from not only the um, UK creative team like myself, the MD and the um, um, dance supervisor, um, but you've also got our executive producer, you've got the management from Playful, as you know, Mark. Oh, yes. <laughs> as you know, there's about 10 people there. Um, but, you know, one thing, we're all willing you to be terrific. Yeah. You know, we are on your side. We're on your side. I think that's the most important thing. And actors, however experienced you are, actors forget that. That yeah. you're being called in because they want you to fail. You know, this yeah. is, time is money. They want you oh, yeah. to come in and be good because they've yes. made that choice to bring you back in. And I think everybody's got to remember that. Whatever stage in the business you are, they want to see you. They want you to be good. They don't oh, want Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because what we really don't want to do is for a minute, because you're videoed and then your tape, sorry, <coughs> your tape is then sent to Joe Mantello and Steve Aremus, who is the musical supervisor, the global musical supervisor. He represents Stephen Schwartz. He's his sort of um, representative and uh, musically. And then they vet those videos and then they come um, at the same time, we write a little critique and saying, you know, this is my first choice, this is my second, and we give our reasons why. And we usually submit at least two, if not three people. Um, there has been once or twice, we've only had maybe one choice because that's the way it is, you know, that's all there was available at that time. Um, but um, normally the American creatives like to have a choice. And, um, and then we hear back, yes or no, or whatever the outcome is. But normally um, our first choices have been accepted and um, trusted. Yeah. And then, of course, they get that call. They get that call from the agent saying, guess what, you got it, you know, which is yeah. just... The most, oh, the most wonderful feeling. It's the most <laughs> horrible feeling when you haven't got it, especially when you've gone through all those different stages. Stages, because yeah. Often I think that you go for jobs and at first, obviously you're, inter you're interested, otherwise you wouldn't be going for it. But yeah. it's only when you start to get recalled and recalled and recalled, and especially for those, for those leading roles. Yeah. Those people will want it so much. And, 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 and to get recall uh, must be just... Amazing. I mean, sometimes, um, Joe or Steve Aremus have sort of said, look, you know, we can see the potential here, but something isn't quite, you know, they're lacking because a certain energy or a certain um, positiveness. Um, because suddenly when people are faced with a camera, 
they go into what I would call um, tele mode. So they become real. I'm not saying if that can't be exciting, but we are working in theater. So everything is that little bit flipped over and is a little bit more heightened yeah. and is a little bit more um, excitement to it. Um, and, um, and sometimes, you know, they can see what we're seeing in the room, but it's not translating over the um, video. So, um, you know, we're asked to refilm people. So we go back into the studio, so to speak, and say, you know, can you try and energize this a little bit more? Or can you place your voice in a different way? You know, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of care is taken in, in the whole process. So um, you've been with it 12 years. Is it 12 yes. years? In there? Yeah, it might be so 13 a bit of an impossible Probably 13, question. isn't it? I'm not very good at maths. 12, 13 yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. Um, who stands out for you over those years? Any of the Oh, really? don't, Mark. You can't do that to me. <laughs> just a couple of people, because there have been some... There have been some people who, you know, the show has made them. Edina Menzel, uh, yeah. Rachel Tucker, Ellis, yeah. they came Yeah, I mean, there are some, yes. Um, yes, like Rachel. Um, right. yeah. And Louise Dearman. Right. Yeah. Kerry Ellis, obviously. Um, there's um, Alice Fern. Yes. You know, um, yeah, there's been a lot of them that have done really well. And that's why it's exciting because you can see, you know, uh, I think it was last year um, in the West End, all the leading people in musicals had been wicked people. You know, and not always the ones that had been um, in the principal roles. You know, like uh, Matt Croke was playing Aladdin. Yes. You know, but he, he, um, he was ensemble. He started in the ensemble. And then um, I said to him, you know, because he always had a natural voice. So I said, you know, Mark, you should work on your voice go away, because I think he was with us for about two years, go away, work on your voice, and start understudying some roles. And he did that, and he came back to us, and he was first cover to Fierro, um, and was very good. And then um, he left and did some other stuff, because at that time there wasn't, the role wasn't vacant for him. And, um, and he ended up playing Aladdin, you know, and, and he, it couldn't have happened to a nicer person, but also because he put the work in and he, yeah. you know, he started where he did. And, um, you know, the, um, Claire, who was um, the lead in 42nd Street, you know what I mean? It was just very exciting. They were ensemble, but, you know, they had a voice and the show allows you to develop as an artist if you're hungry for it. Yeah, you know the message I'm trying to get over here is, you know, to me it just doesn't happen. You have to make sure invest. You've got a year's contract, if not two years. Invest in yourself. Go to those singing lessons. Go to those tap lessons or whatever. You know, whatever you need to go the next step, and you can use it. And the show allows you that because of what it demands, especially if the ensemble to be these different characters, to understudy. You know, it's all there. And, you know, and that's what I enjoy is fostering that talent. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I think one great thing about the show in terms of casting it is that you don't need star names. I know no. at the beginning, maybe it was very nice to have Idina Menzel on board and people like Mary Margulies and, and but actually the show is the star. The characters yeah. are the star, the ensemble is really the star of the show so you must get so many suggestions from agents of oh this person would be good and that person would be good well you must have some, a... i mean there's some parts that can lend themselves a little bit to that um but at the end of the day they have to hit those notes yeah you know, there's, there's no getting away from it um and um yes you know you can maybe lower a key a little bit but never for the two girls, for the two witches, never that. And really, never for anybody, really, because they're very 
firm about they have to hit the notes. And what the Americans say, we don't want any stunt casting. You know, it, they have to be able to do it, you know. But we have, you know, we've had um, Lee Mead, you know, who is lovely as Fiero, but he could sing it, you know, and he could move too. And, you know, we had um, um, Matt Willis, you know, um, and he was divine, you know, because he had something about him. He just was so sensual and um, assured. It was brilliant. And tattoos, you know, I mean, you know, if we line up, as I've said to you, you know, if, if I lined up the wizards, they couldn't be more diverse. No. You know, they're tall, thin, fat, short, little, petite, you know, you name it. But there has to be an essence of that character in you yeah. and what you bring to the table to that character. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. And I think we're lucky that we can be quite flexible that way. And as a result of that, it refreshes the show. You know, yes, I, 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 my job is to say, look, Mark, you have to be on number eight. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Um, but why? Is, because is, there's a spot number, there's the special people. there. You know, yeah, you can act in the dark if you want to, but on number eight, there's a lovely special for you there. <laughs> That's the most difficult part of the show for anybody watching this, not knowing what we're talking about. There are these numbers on stage which you can't see when you're in the audience, but they are yeah. what's called lighting states. And if you don't hit that certain number, you're not in the light. And that was the most difficult thing. You, you, you're lost in the scene and you're acting and you're performing and you're standing on number seven, not number, number eight. And my guest today would be, um, would be waiting to tell me, but that was, that was great. Um, we're recording this lovely interview uh, during a very difficult time, obviously. Where is Wicked at the moment in terms of casting? Because you were just about to have some new cast members, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, we were literally at that final stage of filming people to send to America. We were that close to casting, you know, and, um, and sadly, it all fell apart. It's very sad because, again, we had... You know, um, because people were naturally wanting to leave, you know, they've been with the show for three years or whatever it was, you know, they, they felt it was time to go and everything. And we were having some really different, fresh people that we hadn't come across before. And it, you know, it would have revitalized the show again, you know, um, but... Um, so what will happen? Get... Sorry? What How will happen? Well, well, literally, um, I was still in, it was on the Monday, 16th was it 16th i think monday the 16th march the 16th and um i was um still at auditions doing the filming and all this kind of thing and um i was due to be in the theater that night to watch the show and you know and um, see everybody and um and i thought oh it's a lovely evening or you know we finished about six and i thought oh it's a lovely evening. I'm going to walk to the theatre. I'm quite, uh, you know, I do a bit of power walking, so I can walk quite quickly. So I got to the theatre at about um, quarter to seven, when normally is what we call the parish news after warm up. And I, I went straight downstairs, and the stage was empty, absolutely empty. And there was only our company manager and our stage manager on the stage. And I went, Where well, is everybody? <laughs> And they said, oh, did, didn't you get our message? And I said, well, no, no, I, I mean, I had the phone because obviously during the auditions, I have it on silent. So I didn't think to put it back on. So I hadn't got any of the messages. <laughs> and, um, and they said, we're closing tonight. There's no show. I couldn't believe it. I, I, I didn't see anybody. I, I hadn't seen anybody. Um, I didn't know where they were or anything. And it was the weirdest, weirdest feeling. And the company manager said to me, oh, you better go to the office and collect whatever you need because it could be, you know, a month before we come back, you know, kind of thing. Um, so I collected what I thought I needed for that month, you know, the, you know, my computer and various bits and pieces. And I went home and I rang a couple of people and they said, yes, no, you know, we have no idea when we're going to be back. Yeah. So what about the people who were preparing to 
for that final audition? What will happen when Wicked comes back? Is unfortunately, it... um, unfortunately, um, at the moment they're on. Well, we will see them again. They were on hold, and unfortunately, we've had to release them because what we are doing or what has been agreed with Salt and Equity, um, there was a package that um, the company will resume because they, by that time, they realized it could be six months before we open again. So there's a package that we are able to, um, the full company will resume in six months time. Um, and everybody signed an agreement and their contract. So the contract, because they still had six months to go. Yes. And um, so they are still will have that six months guaranteed work when they return, which is very generous and just admirable uh, thing to do. Yeah. But no. um, yeah, so they, um, so whenever, luckily um, and hopefully, um, Wicked is in a position to be able to outride this crisis, um, hopefully depending on how long it lasts, obviously, not indefinitely, but, you know, um, and so we're hoping, you know, everybody will be fine to return. It's really nice to hear a positive story because, of course, we're doing this, Petra, for acting for others and for those performers. Yes, of course, yes. Professionals who are having a bad time. So it's really lovely to hear that there are some people who are sitting at home now waiting to get back on stage and they know that they will as soon as everything's okay they're back on stage and they can do it so what about the people who were just about to audition do they have to hold off until cast change next year and come back um, and well it all depends um I, I don't know how it's going to play out because now we're there's talk you know like cameron mcintosh has said he doesn't see any shows reopening before 2021 in the new year so um that again makes it longer than six months you know but um but the good thing is that everybody has that guaranteed job whenever that period is and we're in uncertain uncharted territory here we have no idea what's going to happen and um you know uh, i've been in touch with the company and um, you know, they're all in good spirits, all healthy and safe. Um, lots of dog owners, <laughs> newly found dog owners. Uh, I, I said to some of them, I said, we're going to have to open a pet's corner. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, they're being productive in their own ways, um, especially, you know, those that are, um, are singers. You know, they've been doing lots of charity gigs and everything like that. And... Um, sort of some of them um physically have been teaching online and you know they're trying to keep us productive and trying to keep their craft going as much as they possibly can um uh, some of them bless them um you know because they've got mortgages and everything to pay and um you know they're they're doing the night shift at sainsbury's and tesco's and you know and that's the reality of it um like everybody else you know like lots and lots and lots of people so um you know we're all in this together that's the thing isn't yes. it you know um and and what i'm really pleased about is that just lately it's been in my personal humble opinion has been a bit late but at least it's now happening that um the theater is being um the focus is gone on to our industry. When I talk theatre, I mean the films, the commercials, the TV, you know, it's our sector has been, well, we haven't been that important. No. You know, you know we've been a little bit down um, the pecking order, um, but um, at long last there is some recognition of, you know, how much we contribute yes. to yes. the economy. And, um, and how much we tr contribute to the well-being of people mm. and, you know, making theatre alive. Theatre will not go away. Our industry will not go away. Mm. But it's just a matter of when 
and we don't know that. That's out of our hands. And I, can't see, I can't see Wicked going away for a long, long time. In yeah. fact, if anything, you know, fans will be wanting to see it even more after this. Petra, it's been absolutely fascinating to talk to you. Um, I had 17 glorious months on, on Wicked. I was thrilled to be on that And stage. we were thrilled to have you too. I, I love sharing. Um, our office used to be next door to your dressing room. And we had many a giggle, many a giggle. <laughs> we certainly did. Well, you know what's so great is it's packed and you walk out the stage door and people from all over the world are there and they, yeah, yeah. And they talk about it and it's meant so much to them. So... You know, you always went home with a with a real spring in your step, thinking this show actually means something, and to get started. Yes, you know. it touches, doesn't it? It touches. There, there's something very unique and special, and it really touches the heart. Yeah, it yeah. does. Thank you for giving up your time to talk to us. Absolutely Pleasure. fascinating go behind the scenes of Wicked. Um, if you have enjoyed this conversation, and I'm sure you have because you've stuck with it all this time, please hit the donate button. So if you're watching it on YouTube, you can go back to the Acting for Others website and just hit donate. It takes you to the Just Giving page. It couldn't be simpler. Just give whatever you can just to make sure that theatre and the entertainment industry thrives and you're doing your bits to help people who are having a bit of a financially challenging time right now. Petra Siniewski, wonderful to talk to you. Long live Wicked. Talk to you soon. Absolute pleasure, Mark. Lovely to see you. Bye, darling. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching that conversation. If you've enjoyed it, please go to the Acting for Others website, which is actingforothers.co.uk, and hit the donate button, which will take you immediately to the Just Giving page. And please give as little or as much as you possibly can to help those performers and people in the industry who really need your help financially right now. Thanks a lot.